Okay, today I'm going to be showing you what happens when you drop sodium in ice. So first I'm going to be trying regular ice from my freezer, and then I'm going to be trying it with ice that I've super cooled with liquid nitrogen. So why do I think the reaction is going to be different between those two? So when you take some ice from your refrigerator, you can see that the ice is kind of just covered with water. It starts to melt and you can see the liquid water on top of it. But ice that's in your freezer looks pretty solid. But actually, even at your freezer temperatures, there's a microscopic layer of liquid water on top of it. And the reason there's a little tiny microscopic layer of water on top of ice, even at really cold temperatures, is because there's always some impurities. There's always some dust or even ions like sodium ions or calcium that always keeps a little bit of the water in the liquid state. And because salt water freezes at a much lower temperature than regular pure water, even at pretty cold temperatures, it keeps it so there's a very thin layer of salt water on top of regular ice. And in order for sodium to react with ice, it needs to react with liquid water. And so I'm guessing that when I put the sodium on regular ice, that very thin microscopic layer will be able to react with the sodium and then it will get hot and it will melt more of the sodium which will melt more of the ice and it will create this chain reaction that will eventually explode. But I'm hypothesizing that if I put liquid nitrogen on the ice, I will get it cold enough that I'll be able to freeze any even salt layer on top of it, any salt water or impurity water on top of it. It'll be so cold that everything will be a pure solid and the sodium won't be able to react with the water because they're both in the solid state and they can't mix together. And also because it's in the solid state, the sodium won't be able to react with the hydroxide ion that is regularly in liquid water. So I'm guessing that it won't be able to react, but there's only one way to find out. So first we'll do regular ice from my freezer and then we'll do liquid nitrogen cooled ice. Okay, here we go. Three, two, one. Whoa! Okay, you wanna know why I had my blast shield up here? Because of this stuff. So these are spots of molten sodium that were flying through the air. You definitely don't wanna get hit by molten sodium. Up on here, everywhere. See what happens when I get it wet a little. Whoa. Whoa, ow, gosh. <laughs> okay, so in showing you how dangerous molten sodium would be, I just got burned by molten sodium. Okay, now let's see what happens when we cover it with liquid nitrogen. Okay, that's our sodium in there. So I have to keep putting on liquid nitrogen because relative to the ice, the ice is burning hot. And so it keeps evaporating the liquid nitrogen, but it's getting colder and colder and colder each time. So we gotta get it down to the temperature of the liquid nitrogen to make sure there's no layer of liquid water on top of the ice. Okay, so the ice and the sodium is now at the temperature of liquid nitrogen. No reaction. Okay, so you can see that when I'm touching it to the bare ice on top here, there's no reaction whatsoever. That's because now there's no layer of liquid water on top of it. 
And if there's no liquid water, and if there's no liquid water, then the sodium cannot react. So you can see there's plenty of oxygen for the hydrogen to ignite with, but it's just too cold. And the not even the hydrogen isn't reacting, but it's not even melting the ice, which means the sodium isn't even reacting with the water. So sodium plus water does not always equal a reaction. It has to be liquid water. Look at that, no reaction whatsoever. I can just set the sodium on there, nothing's happening. But let's see what happens when I put this really cold sodium in warm water. Three, two, one. Whoa, nothing yet. Uh-oh. <laughs> there it finally went. Whoa! <laughs> hey everybody, I'd like to thank Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes in design, business, technology, and more. So go check it out, click the link in my description to get the premium subscription for free for two months, which is an awesome deal. So the premium membership gives you unlimited access to high quality classes and must know topics so you can improve your skills, unlock new opportunities and do the work that you love. So I'm currently taking several courses right now on Skillshare. One of them that I'm interested in is Fundamentals of Photography. I'm learning a lot from this one. I'm also taking several different courses on e-commerce and business creativity, social branding. Skillshare is also a more affordable option than most learning platforms out there. It has an annual subscription less than $10 a month. So check out Skillshare. The first 500 people that click the link in my description will get their first two months free. Hey everyone, thanks for watching another episode. I hope you liked it, I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any comments or questions, let me know in the comments section. If you're not subscribed yet, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell to be notified when my latest video's out. And head over to theactionlab.com in order to get your very first Action Lab subscription box so you can do the same type of experiments you see me do on my channel. And thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.